Hi, I'd like to talk about uh, the topic is uh, go my go-to planes. Uh, planes, the hemp planes uh, are more likely to pick up when in my furniture making on a day-to-day -day basis. I have, as you can see behind me, I have quite a large collection of hemp planes and I've got two other hemp plane racks on and uh, these are restored vintage planes on these lower shelves. It's a fairly recent addition. So I have uh, many, many planes available to me and I can of course get even more. But uh, the topic revolves around my go-to planes, and the reason I I bring this up is because you're uh, if you're just starting out, you're better off just acquiring the hand planes you uh, you need for the uh, for the f furniture making or the type of woodworking you do, instead of uh, just accumulating or just purchasing a large number of hand planes that you might or might not need. I've been at this for, for decades, so I've accumulated a large selection of hand planes, but I've learned a lot along the way about what planes are really important in, uh, in the style or the type of woodworking and furniture making I do. <clears throat> I'll just give you an idea of the, uh, the four or five hand planes I tend to use most for, uh, for the most part. So I'll start with uh, the, very, the smallest plane. This is an apron plane. It's, a, uh, it's available from different manufacturers. Uh, Veritas, Lee Nielsen, and some other more recent manufacturers, but it's a it's a one-handed plane, and it's essentially a small block plane, and I tend to use it because I can pick it up and and uh, chamfer the edges of uh, the long edges of boards or chamfer the uh, the ends of boards very easily. It's a very light plane, solid plane, but it works at uh, a lot of I do a lot of edge work with it, and uh, working with small components, I can also a uh, joint small components and trim uh, small components. Uh, a component that, this size, for example, I can pick it up and actually just simply, you know, just reverse it and just joint the edge, the long edge, so that there isn't much, there isn't much involved there. And uh, so this is the beauty of this plane. So it's called an apron plane. So this is my, uh, I, I tend to use this a lot. Next up is a uh, <coughs> is a smoother a smoother plane. Now the smoother plane you can get some multiple versions of a smoother plane. This happens to be uh, my go-to plane. It's a number four and a half. It's a little wider than a four. It's a little heavier than a four too. But that also becomes an advantage. The added mass. It's easier to actually glide along a board because it's uh, it's heavier and it's more stable and more likely to. Uh, to not chatter, and even with the thicker blade, because of its mass and its weight. So this is another uh, another plane that I tend to pick up. Having said that, because a four and a half, it's a, it's a wider than a four. I have uh, fours available to me. This is a uh, another uh, four that I I tend to pick up too, but not as not as often as a four and a half. I just I set that the four and a half up. To a certain uh, thickness of shaving, so I, I tend to pick that up. But this is another plane that's uh, equally good. It's a f number four. It's uh, it's actually cast bronze body, so so it's very very heavy for a number for a, for a plane of this size. You can uh, invest in something like this, or a steel or an iron body version of it. And uh, as an example, this is an iron body version. This is a. Uh, it's a, a very ubiquitous uh, common record number four. This is probably what you'd want to start with if you're not if you're not interested in the number of the heavier mass and the width of a four and a half. Uh, number four is fairly standard as a, as a beginner plane or as a it's a versatile universal plane in a workshop. So this is a, a record plane, and I've replaced a lot of the irons on these record planes from uh, from one eighth to about three sixteenths in thickness. This is a slightly smaller version of the same. It's a number three, and it, it works really well too. It's lighter, so it's able to do smaller work. And I tend to pick this up too if I'm, if I'm doing, if I'm working on smaller components, furniture components. But again, my uh, my, my real go-to is number four and a half, and I like what I like about it is the added, the added width of it. It's a little wider than the four, uh, so I can actually joint and work uh, wider boards. Uh, is less planing involved per a stroke. Another plane I use very often is a number seven jointer. 
Now I had a, early on I had a decision to make, should I get a number seven or, or a number eight? And I, I decided after researching it and listening to uh, uh, other woodworkers, I've decided on number seven. And number eight is considerably larger and heavier, and it's un, kind of unwieldy for, the, for its application. So number seven is ideally suited as a, as a joint airplane. So I use this uh, a lot. I use this for uh, longer boards, the joint edges and uh, the dress surfaces of boards. So this is my, my go-to plane for that application. Now, having said that, I've, uh, I also tend to use this wood body joint here. It's a little shorter, but I, uh, I, I like the fact that it's a wood body and it glides along much, much smoother than any metal body plane. So I tend to use this a lot too. This is actually a plane of, uh, I designed and created 22 years ago, 2002-2003 time frame, when I was actually marketing some, uh, some wood body tank planes. So I kept some as, uh, for uh, nostalgic reasons, but I tend to use them. Put that aside. Another uh, plane I tend to use very often is, uh, is more of a specialty plane. This is a, uh, a plow plane. It's a modern Veritas version of a, of a traditional plow plane, and it's very light, but it works incredibly well, and I tend to use this. All the adjustments are, are uh, easy to set up. So I tend to use this for drawer grooves a lot, so it's preset with a quarter-inch uh, or three-sixteenths iron, and it's offset to a predetermined width, so I can create, I can create drawer grooves with it. I can create drawer grooves with it, and uh, so it works really well. And so, uh, in this uh, in this case, it's a left hand left hand oriented plane because I am left handed. So well, that's another specialty plane. And this is the uh, the selection of planes I use. Now, lately, I've uh, I've restored a, a series of uh, of uh, vintage uh, plow planes, and I use them for the same reason. This has a three sixteenths iron. Unfortunately, I don't have a large selection of irons for these. They only came with a one iron. This, coincidentally, this is the width I use for a drawer groove. So I use this. I preset it, and I, I tend to use these for, uh, for uh, grooving. And again, these are three different, three different versions, three different uh, makers. And this is uh, this is a half inch iron. And this is a screw arm type of a plot plane with another, I think, 3 8 to half inch iron. And it's offset, so I could use this too. They're all, they've all been restored and uh, they're, they're functional, completely functional. So, so these are the planes I tend to use in my, uh, in my woodworking. And then, uh, of course, you should always, always invest in a, uh, in a block plane. So, I mean, block planes. Many woodworkers are not familiar with uh, the two versions uh, of a block plane. The, the version they're most familiar with is a is a low angle block plane, where the, uh, the iron sits at a 37 degree angle, 25 degree, and a 12 degree bed, 37 for 37. This works really well on end grain, and uh, so I use that as much as I use another version of a block plane, which is a standard angle block plane. It's uh, everything is. So it's set at 45 degrees with a uh, 20 degree bed and a 25 degree iron, a bevel up iron. This is set at 45, which translates to a very small smoother. So I picked this up also as a one-handed smoother, as much as I, uh, I use my apron plane. So when I find when I find the apron plane a little bit too small, I'll, uh, I'll pick up the uh, the standard angle block plane. So. <clears throat> I'm not sure if Lee, Lee, uh, so Lee Nielsen, by the way, I'm not sure if Lee Nielsen still, still makes this. It's, uh, it's a nine and a half, number nine and a half in the, uh, in the numbering scheme for, uh, for, for Stanley, that Stanley uh, created. And this is a uh, 60 and a half. So this, this of course is available from both uh, large manufacturers such as Veritas, Lee Nielsen, and some other more recent manufacturers. And uh, this is more, uh, a specialty version of the block plane. So you might want to invest in one of these too if you want to use a one-handed. Uh, but they are, this uh, premium planes are expensive and I tend to purchase p premium planes. So you, if you need to purchase one of these, I'd probably buy the low angle version and uh, the block plane. And an apron plane isn't that expensive, so you might want to invest in that. 
and uh, either a number four or four and a half uh, smoother. Premium always. You won't regret to spending the extra money as they're, they're easier to adjust. They're, they have thicker metal, thicker irons and uh, cap irons and, and they're just better built. <coughs> so there's less maintenance to do, less fiddling with adjustments. And this again, you should purchase a, uh, a joint or either a number seven or a number eight. But I, I, I prefer number seven. It's a little lighter than number eight, a little shorter, I think 22 inches or something, or if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, but it does, it works equally well as number eight. Number eight is a fantastic plane, but it's very heavy and has the additional mass. And if you want to go the wood body route, you can of course make your own or try to find a wood body version of any of these planes. So. I've, uh, I've written a number of books on, uh, on uh, my woodworking journey and different aspects of woodworking. And this is my journey, my high tech from high tech to low tech. And these are uh, interesting books. But this particular book is about a year, I uh, published it about a year ago and it's called Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World, available at, at my, wood, my woodskills.com website in digital or print format. And um, it uh, actually it's available in print format on Amazon. So it's it just it talks about my uh, how I've moved to hand tools and all the advantages I find with hand tools over using machines and all the techniques I use in my, my hand tools with bench hooks and shooting boards and all that. And similar with this book on design to making, another one of my books available at my woodskills.com. So I think we'll uh, we'll end this here and uh, hopefully you've. Uh, I've inspired you to go out and purchase some hand tools and, uh, and try to become familiar with them. Try to purchase fewer hand tools if you can and become very familiar with the, with the hand tool itself. You'll enjoy that hand tool much more than just acquiring too, too many hand tools and not knowing which one to really pick up. And every time you pick it up, you need to relearn how to use it. So I found that out over the years. Just invest in fewer tools, but the tools you'll actually use and, uh, and the type of woodworking you do as opposed to just accumulating. No, don't forget, this is what you see here is, is over a 25 to 30 year period of accumulation.